Hey everybody, Mike from Just Watch, back with another Just Watch episode. Everybody, thank you for joining us today for this episode. Definitely appreciate having you along. If you are a first time viewer of our content, thanks for stopping by and checking us out. If you like the content, please hit the subscribe button below so you catch new episodes when we release them. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell there as well so that you get notified when we do release new content. All right, before we get to the Phoebos watch unboxing, which I'm actually really excited to check out, I want to conduct a little bit of channel business, and that goes back to the same thing as we talked about on our last episode with the Squally unboxing, and it's this Seiko watch that I somehow can't seem to give away. This is the watch we did the giveaway for about a, six weeks ago, I want to say, and drew a winner, and he just never contacted me back. So the last episode, about a week ago, I asked what we should do. Everybody pretty much unanimously said that we should give it away again. So that is what we are going to do. We're gonna give this away again, same rules apply. All you have to do is be a subscriber, comment on this video that you would like to win it. And also if you'd love to, I'd love it if you hit the like button on this as well. So just comment, like, subscribe this video, my channel, and you are entered to win this watch. Make sure you comment on this episode to win this watch. So this is a really cool watch. I hope that I can actually give it away this time to somebody that will enjoy it and also post on their social media that they want it from me and just kind of give me a shout out. I would definitely appreciate that as well. All right, on to the business at hand. What would you think if you were looking at a spec sheet for a dive watch that's 300 meter water resistant, 316L stainless steel construction throughout, screw down crown, ceramic, unidirectional 120 click bezel, sapphire glass, Seiko automatic movement, stainless bracelet, and a decent size, and just a really good looking aesthetic overall. You'd probably think that watch costs five, six, eight hundred, even up to a thousand dollars, right? I know that's what I would think if I was looking at that spec sheet. Incredibly, this watch goes for 230 US dollars. So it's pretty crazy. When I saw the spec sheet and then the price, I just decided I had to check this out. I know some other channels have talked about these at length as well. I just wanted to check one out for myself. So here we are. I have not taken this out of the box. I have only taken it out of the shipping package. I'm excited to go get this under the lights and take a look and tell you guys what I think initial impression. So let's go get this under the lights and take a look. All right, so here we are under the lights with a Phoebus PY010B as in Bravo dive watch. Interested to take a look at this one. It comes in this rather unassuming outer box. So let's get it out of this box and see what we have inside. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. So inside we have kind of a like a ballistic nylon black box with, you can see that blue, that kind of a cool logo there on the top and just a snap closure and inside of there we have booklets with the phoebus logo instruction manual warranty card quite a nice little package of stuff but we're not here to see packaging we are here to see the watch and there it is really bright blue ceramic bezel i was not expecting the bezel to be that bright blue to tell you the truth but i actually quite like the color and a really interesting bracelet that i'm not sure how to describe it's definitely not oyster or jubilee style it's definitely kind of their own unique thing it's almost kind of like modular little squares to go all the way around a two button deployment clasps there with a the clamshell let's get the plastic off and take a look Sorry about the jump smash cut to where we're at now. I actually had to go off camera and remove the plastic. It was such a pain in the neck. So you can see those little open tabs there where it says open, you're supposed to pull on it. It takes the plastic off with it. Did not work. The tabs came right off without taking any plastic along with it, leaving me to have to commit very careful surgery with a knife cutting the plastic off from the inside. While we're on the subject of plastic, I'm gonna go on a little bit of a rant here, so forgive me for this. If you are a watch manufacturer, please stop using this crap. There is no reason for it. It is a pain in the neck to remove and it's horrible for the environment. So please, just stop using it. I mean, we're shipping these watches in these wonderful velour cushioned cases. What is possibly going to happen to the watch when it's packed into this wonderful case? Just stop with this plastic. That's 
end of my wrist. Let's take a look at the watch now. We have a 42 millimeter diameter, that's from the nine to the three, excluding the crown, 48 millimeters from tip to tip, 22 millimeter lug width, and 14 millimeters thick. You can see that nice coin edge on the bezel and also that Phoebus Octopus logo on the screw down crown. Ceramic bezel inserts, no loom on the bezel insert other than the pip. You have applied index markers with Superluminova BGW9 applied throughout as well as on this nice handset, which we can only see a little bit of. So let's unscrew that crown and see how that looks. So there's our first position where we can set the date. Yeah, nice quick date change there, very nice and precise. And then we have hack in the second position and actually goes the opposite way of most. So we're turning this crown in the clockwise position. Very light feeling as you're turning. It actually feels pretty precise. So no big issues there. Let's come around to the everyone's favorite 1010 or so, and we'll pop that back down. Yeah, nice solid. Catch those threads. Wow, no problem at all. Very solid, precise feeling crown. Doesn't feel like it wants to uh, cross thread at all, no wobble to it, and definitely no grittiness there either as I am turning that back down. Check out the bezel action as we already talked about, that nice coin edge. Wow, actually really nice. Very nice spring feel to it and just really nice solid. It has that little bit of resistance that feels like it should be there without feeling like it is being hung up or sticky or anything and no play or slop either. So good stuff there on the bezel. Everything seems to be lining up. This actually just went shooting right past the 12 o'clock marker there. Let's come back around. Yeah, actually went half a click too far again, but I'm just gonna leave it there. So as far as the bezel goes, ceramic insert, bright blue, does not quite match the dial, at least underneath my studio lights. Wonderful wave pattern on that dial with a nice radiance to it actually that changes as you're changing angle you can see it there as you're coming around. See how that changes? So really nice there. Applied index markers with Superluminova BGW9 applied throughout and on the handset. Nice, simple, clean handset, almost like a syringe style with that nice orange second hand that you can see sweeping around there. We have the Phoebus Octopus at the 12 o'clock and then the 300 meter automatic at the six as well as the date aperture. And it looks like some pretty nice beveling going on there on that date window too. Everything on this dial is excellent. My only thing that's really jumping out at me on the dial is the scale of the applied index markers. I think it would look a little bit better if they were just a little bit beefier. It's kind of like the difference of going from like normal font to bold font. I think somebody needs to hit the bold button here and just make them just a little bit bigger. We have a nice minute track going around there, that chapter ring with orange to match the second hand too, which is really, just a really nice looking uh, dial all around. I think definitely looks like something that would be more expensive than you know, what we're paying here at under 250, actually under 240 US dollars. Let's look at this case real quick here. We have brushed finish on the top of the lugs, a bezel, a bezel, a bevel that delineates the brushed from the polished finish on the case sides. Nicely executed polish on the case side there. We already talked about that coin edge. There is the case back with the Phoebos logo. Quite a dome to that case back. That's part of where you're getting that 14 millimeter thickness from. And a fairly flat profile of the case across from the tip to the tip. We have a bracelet here that has no taper, made up of these little squares, very supple. Actually, it feels like it would wear very well. It does feature screw pin for size adjustment, and of course a twin trigger deployment with a clamshell for locking it down. You see the Phoebus etched logo there, and there is your clamshell, and your three position micro adjust with a pin tool, of course. Popping this open, take a look at the inside. We have really nice machined, brushed, finished, stainless inside. Nicely chamfered, so it should wear very comfortably. And the inside of the bracelet also really nicely done. So they have some scalloping there, so it should wear nice and cool. The only thing that's jumping out at me on the bracelet so far is that it doesn't feel like they chamfered the inside edges as much as they did the top edges. So 
They just don't feel as nicely rounded off as I would like. Still not a problem. And let's actually, let's try this on and see how it feels on the wrist. Oh, forgot to mention, I'm wearing the Squale on the NATO still. Testing that out, enjoying wearing this. We'll get back to you with more info on why I'm not running it on the Squale bracelet as well. So pull off the glove. I did not size this yet, so I'll give you just kind of a look on my wrist. I have a 170 millimeter wrist that's just under seven inches for you people that don't speak metric. That 48 tip to tip is a really nice size on my wrist. 42 millimeter, definitely not overpowering it. And you can see how that wears, just really wears nice. Yeah. Definitely does not look too big on the wrist. And I really enjoy that color. I'll give you a look at the clasp. So that's what the clasp would look like if it was sized down. I'm usually not a fan of bracelets that don't have taper, but I think once that's down, I think that'd be pretty nice actually. Maybe I will try it on the bracelet. I was thinking that I would remove it and put it onto a NATO, but actually after trying that on real quick, I am reconsidering that. I forgot to mention sapphire crystal too. So it's a sapphire crystal. It is a flat sapphire crystal with AR coating on the inside. And let's take a look at the, lumino at the luminous material too before we go away. So I'm gonna pop off the lights here and see what happens. You can see a nice glow there to it. It is pretty strong. I mean, everybody knows the Super Luminova. It's good stuff there. The BGW9 is a good formula. It should glow pretty bright for the first hour and then kind of scale down a little bit, but still be readable for a good portion of the evening, if not all evening, depending on where your eyes are as far as your, your night vision goes. So that's it for this Phoebus dive watch. I really like the watch. It's my first impression. I think you're getting a lot of watch for the money, about 240 US dollars. You're getting 316L, 300 meter water resistant, ceramic bezel, sapphire glass, a fantastic Seiko NH35 movement. Just good stuff all around and a nice proportion watch as well. Just a really nice look all around. So we'll get back to you with a longer term review on it. In the meantime, if you've not already, I definitely would appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button. It's gonna appear right over here. You can click that and you can follow us along for more content, including the longer term review on this watch. All right, everybody, thank you again for joining us. We'll be back soon with another episode.